Man. Yeah, so we're back on live, man. We're recording. Um, yeah. yeah. How you guys doing? Everybody good? Spectacular, baby. Nervous. Good, good. <laughs> oh, shit. What's going on? Uh-oh. Damn cleanse, man. Oh, oh man. Uh, when the lady gives you the cleanse and she snickers and says, good luck, nah, she this is oh. something to be nervous about. Yeah, she's petty for that. Mm. Definitely, y'all got no company coming over. Word. That's crazy. Yeah, that, that would oh. be. And there's no. <laughs> that that wouldn't be a good look at all. Yeah, is this your first joint? This is your first about that. This your first one? No. So no, I I took one called Mag 07 or something. It's, but it's like pills from GNC before. Mm-hmm. That one's mm-hmm. crazy, but. This one's all, all organic. Um, shout out to Top Notch in Stoughton. Right. It's like alkaline water, apples, vegetable broth, stuff like that. And these uh, pills that they make where they right. crush the herbs and vegetables into a capsule. But she's like, there's specific instructions. And then she gives me the instructions. And as I'm leaving, she's like, um, yeah, so this, that, and the other. And <laughs> good luck. I'm like, Raise my eyebrow, yeah. hit her with the wrong eyebrow, like, good luck. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all that means is that she's she's tried that before, and uh, it's canceled yeah. a date night for her, too. So right. just yeah. let you know, if you got any plans. <laughs> Nothing going on. <laughs> but those Cancel listening at home, man, <laughs> DJ Payne is, is on a journey through some sort of cleanse. Um, Payne, tell him about tell him the cleanse and, and why you're, you're doing the cleanse, man. Um, I'm just, I'm trying to lose some weight. So I, last year I had to get a disc in my neck replaced. So I wasn't as active as I had been gained the weight that I lost back. So not all of it, but enough of it. So I was trying to lose about 15 pounds. And she was like, yeah, this will help you lose up to 10 pounds of waste in your stomach. Like 10 pounds. She was wow. like, yeah, cause a lot of times it's just sitting there. And yeah. that's what causes disease and stuff like that. Mm. So I was like, all right, I'm going to try it and see what happens. So First off, Spar and Minds listeners, uh, I'm not sure if y'all are familiar or not. And if you're not watching the uh, the broadcast here uh, on YouTube, uh, you should be following us on YouTube. But if you're not, uh, one thing you won't notice is that pain is 198 pounds with Tim's <laughs> and a whole hoodie on. <laughs> so for him to lose 15 more is kind of spectacular. But go off, bro. That's your thing. I love it. Go in. <laughs> um, real quick, real quick on that topic. So I remember I did a, a fast joint. This was a couple of years back. And um, it was a, I was, we were listening to the Steve Harvey show. That's why I remember how long ago, because I stopped fucking with Steve a, a while back. But he had he had a, a product that they were pushing with uh, D-Herbs. They had this kind of mm. cleanse. It was a like a 10-day, 20-day joint where you was taking these pills every day. To clean your colon out, to clean, you know, to clean the whole system out. It was a really, it was a really long-term approach towards a cleanse. And we did that in dog. The first thing, now, so this was my first time ever doing a cleanse as well. And they'll tell you if it's your first time doing it, it's probably going to be the roughest, right? Because your body's not used to this kind of ordeal, you dig? And so we did that cleanse, bruh. I was literally, I just like, fuck it. I'm putting the Xbox in the bathroom. I had like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, she was she was spectacular. So like, I, I ain't never been through nothing like this, nigga. Yeah. I went, through, I, done, I done memorized all the Jet Beauty of the weeks. Like it, it was a real. <laughs> you hear me? It was, it was a it was a real adventure, B. So, but at, at the end of that, I ended up losing like eleven pounds in like the first nine. Days, nice, whatever it was. Nice, so it, nice. I mean, it does what it it definitely does what it says it's going to do. So all salute right. to your journey, bro. I'm here for it. Yeah. I mean, for sure, for I, I sure. already lost five just from, I'm supposed to be doing this um 60 day challenge where I'm eating only fruits and vegetables and drinking only water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That shit sucks for one. Cause it, every, now everything that I don't normally want to eat, I want to eat all of a sudden. Of course. I yes. thought we'll go. <laughs> yeah. But, I'm on day 10 now or nine. How many days we've been back from Atlanta? Nine. Mm-hmm. So about, about thank, God, thank God you didn't try that journey down there. 
Yeah, that was, Ooh, bro. That's you wouldn't have made it. After. You wouldn't have made it. That was it. You wouldn't have made it, brother. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, 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 yeah. There's, there's no, there's no way you could have been at that table Saturday morning watching everything oh, no. go on and just hell fruit no. water in front no. of yours. Hell no, you'd have been like <laughs> training boys. No, you'd have been swinging air like. <laughs> For real. We need to get a so, sponsorship man. with the Atlanta. What's the name of that job? Oh, Atlanta Black Atlanta Breakfast Club. Club. Yeah. ABC. Yeah, a salute to them. Yeah, my salute God. Salute to them. Incredible. Go ahead. So, I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to I, I don't want to go, I, I go too far without acknowledging uh, the elephant in the room, but I'm not sure if you guys noticed that Chuck just said he's no longer fucking with Steve Harvey. What's that mm. about, Chuck? Yeah. Yeah, I I, Steve, I think that. Steve Harvey had some strange political issues. Um, back when Trump was in office and he was agreeing with a lot of things that Trump was saying at the time. And I'm like, first off, Steve been talking about how he's a man of the people for so long. Right. He's, you know, and then he was talking about, well, I'm not Trump is right because he said, I'm like, nigga. So it just, it just, it just rubbed me the wrong way. Um, I tend to, as you guys know, over the course of seven seasons, politically, if it doesn't support our community, I, I keep it to myself. You know what I mean? Um, my opinion isn't always needed on things that are bigger than me. You know what I mean? And especially if I have a powerful voice that can sway people in my community in an unfavorable way, like what we're going to talk about tonight a little bit, kind of, um, I tend to stay quiet on them. You know what I mean? Cause I don't want people to, uh, not you put stay our quiet. Wow. That's, that's interesting. Oh, you're certain. staying quiet on something that's interesting that's, 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 that's very interesting that's just like I've, I've, I've in seven seasons I've never heard I've never heard that yeah. before I've never heard you yeah. say that yeah like yeah, staying let's, quiet let's move on because I'm about it's about to be me and chef in a minute here brother let's I'm just saying like I've never <laughs> yeah, director, I don't want no problems I'm just saying seven seasons yeah. I've never heard you yeah. take Come that on, stand man. so yeah okay. all right. Just, well played. Take one well more played. sip, please. Take one yeah. more sip of that here. Yeah. Whatever's is that a diamond shaped glass? Uh, by no, the way, no, 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 Yo, come yo, with the the bond bond must, it must come with a holder or something, right? Before right. we put it down. Yo, nah, the bond bond villain shot glass, diamond hey, shaped. Diamond shaped glasses. Yeah, we have we having a show you. tonight. What we doing, man? Y'all gonna <laughs> direct this mode, man? <laughs> What we doing, man? What we doing? What we doing? Oh shit! So, yeah, um, I do want to. On a, I do want to. <laughs> I do want to change the pace a little bit and get into some other stuff. But uh, before we do that, hold on just a sec. Let's get it. <laughs> You're ready. Let's <laughs> get money in North Carolina, man. <laughs> we get that money down. Remind me to switch up this intro. Yeah, yo, come on, guys. What are we? What are we doing out these streets? Seven seasons in. What are we doing out these streets? What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> It's the mirror time on the mic. Yeah, you know the deal is real life. Hotel high time, we're bringing you the field. Dude, you think you're the honey man. I'm gonna keep it in the middle of the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, fellas. Uh... Yeah, I gotta fix this control. I'm not sure what's going on with it, but anyway, we'll figure it out later. It looks like a uh, studio. What I wanted to hear with us tonight. New studio, man, little man. You know what time it is. No, 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 no. It's all love. It's all love. It's all love. Salute to the homie little man. Salute to the homie little man. Oh, my God. That was really feel, yeah. We raw tonight, baby. Yo. No, it's cool. It's cool. It's all jokes. Salute to the homie little man. hope he's, uh... You know it's Friday, Monday, man. What's going on? No, it's love. Feeling real raw around here, cuz. What's going on? Oh man, um, shaking. Yeah, what I wanted to get into tonight was 
uh, something a little different than usual. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to discuss the idea or the, I don't know, the theory around, you know, bad habits or addictions and, and things of that nature. Um, and not so much just that, but more so how we, you know, if it's internal, how do we handle it? If it's external and it's someone close to us, how do we, how do we handle it? How do we help? How do we support? Um, you know, things of that nature. Um, I'm thinking like, but that stuff hits home. How do you, how, how do you, how do you shoulder that type of that energy? You know what I mean? Because no, it's not you per se, but it's someone you love, someone, you know, um, maybe you didn't know it happened at the time. Uh, you know, if you did, how would you have intervened? You know, if you didn't know when you found it after the fact, like, how does that change how you move forward forward? You know, like stuff like that, man. Cause it's all around us, man. You know, you can't avoid it. Everyone's dealing with it one, one way or the other. And it's in so many different facets. It's not just, you know, substance abuse. Sometimes it's social media. Sometimes it's TV. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, man, so that's, me, that's, that's a heavy one because I, 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 I can pull from a personal place with that. Yeah, yeah and, you know, and, and I'm here for the I'm here for the discussion. But let's start off, at the man, top I mean, of the conversation, right? Because every time we talk about substance abuse, we talk about addiction, we talk about these kind of conversations. It's one of the first things we generally hear Middle America scream out is that, "Oh, therapy is an answer." And I think that's something you three would echo. Correct? I, you can tell me if I'm wrong. But you for, were telling me that for substance like drug abuse, abuse for drug abuse, addictions, you would say that some form of therapy will be the, 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 the solution towards that, or at least a step towards it, right? Is that true? Uh, not, not necessarily. Not necessarily. It will be part of it, but I wouldn't necessarily yeah, say that the, the, the substance abuse will be the, the thing for that. No, I don't think so. Okay. So then let's, no. let's expound a little bit on what, what the, the first step is towards assisting somebody with an addiction, substance abuse? What, what, what is that? What's that first step? Well, I, I think first they would have to recognize that there's an issue, okay. that there's a problem. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think some people can, can be so, you know, there's people call functioning addicts, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And people are able to get up every day, go to work, you know what I'm saying? All that stuff and still have these addictions and issues and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's, that's a little bit, that's a little bit different there. You know what I mean? Um, and yeah, some people can function well with it in their system. You know, some people, some people can't, like I, I saw someone, you know what I'm saying? Like get up and go and, and function every day and still be using and stuff like that. And I was just like, what the, f like, how, like how the hell, you know, how the hell can you do that? You know what I mean? Um, you know, family, everybody's got one of those in their family. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, well, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a tough thing. You know, when you see someone you love dealing with that kind of stuff. And I remember seeing someone I love deal with that and actually breaking down, like crying, upset, seeing like, yo, what, like, what are you doing to yourself? Like you've, you went through something like this before you've battled it. You've came back and you're telling me you're going to go back again, like crazy to me, you know what I'm saying? But you know, the, no matter what I did, the person still had to want to kick it and want to, it's only, but so much as a relative, a loved one, you can say or do in those situations, you know what I'm saying? Because when a person is in that life, I've never been, I've never had an addiction like that. You know what I'm saying? To the point where I wouldn't know how to control it. So right. I think it's easier for me to sit back and say what I would have, could have, sh should have done if I've never been in that position and had an addiction like that. You know what I mean? So I don't mean to be long winded on it, but no. yeah, this is, Please. this is a touchy, su this, this is, this is a touchy subject. You know what I'm saying? Because again, it's, it's, it's one in every, every family, you know what I mean? And, and again, sometimes functioning, you know what I mean? And then sometimes it's, it was just terrible. You know what I'm saying? Like you can just see it and you don't, you don't know what to do or say, you know, in that position and a, and a person just has to want it. All you can do is just be there, I guess, until, you know, they, they start maybe taking something from you and to help that issue out. And then it's, 
then it's something different. You know, I'm just saying real talk. Like it's, you know what I mean? It could get to that place where they're like, yo, cause let me get, you know what I'm saying? And you hate to see him in that position or you hate to be like, nah, cause I ain't got it. But it's like, yo, like I can't contribute to your habit either though, too. And every, every situation is different too. Like there's no right or wrong way per se to go about it. Like, I've had uncles and aunts and cousins and even current friends that have gone through addictions with drugs or alcohol. And so in some cases, it's showing love, having them around love and approaching it that way and coming from a place of concern and using it almost like, I don't want to say soft parenting, but like coming at it in a gentle way. And then there's other times where it's like tough love, like, yo, what the fuck are you doing? enough's enough because they're not responding to that uh softer approach so you have to come at them with the tough love like yo you know better i know you know better and you can do better let's do it what do you need me to do you know something you know something pain i um i grew up in the same era that you guys did and i grew up with the the dare to be different t-shirts you know what i mean and i grew up where you know crack is whack and i grew up with you know the with the mindset of seeing what different substances were doing to our community and i think luckily i had enough wherewithal to understand yo that shit's chips right like and it's and i think here's the other part of the conversation so so you got to remember and god it's just one of these things because i've been this hood ambassador for so long but Substance abuse is such a gigantic part of the hood story, right? On sure. both sides of the equation, right? Yeah. On one side of the equation, we, we talk about the fiends and the people who's addicted to these different types of substances, right? And, and, and honestly, let's keep it a buck. There was a time in the 70s, early 80s, and as you guys are talking about, probably even going on now to some degree, where... There was a cool factor to being involved with substances on that level, right? To be, yeah, you, you know, dudes in the seventies are part of their nose all the time, right? Mm-hmm. You know, dudes in the late seventies, early eighties, it was a thing to go, oh, we going to go down and get drunk, first nigga to get drunk. It was that kind of stuff, right? That's that's what it was, right? There was a cool factor on that side of the equation. Then there was also the cool factor for people who were pushing said substances within the community. We glorify rappers and gangsters who was moving weight and doing. There was a glorification yeah. based on what they look like. So our hood is see. Now listen, I can't relate to other hoods. So stop hitting me in the comments. Stop inboxing me about Charles. You never talk about other community. I can't relate to what they're doing over there. But in right. our community, where the we are ravaged by substance abuse. Right? You guys have yeah. just said it a moment ago. We all got somebody, yeah. one or two, maybe even three, four, five people in our family who's going through this kind of situation, yeah. right? It's a fact, yeah. And it's been that way for as long as we've been here. And it's, mm-hmm. and so I think what it brought up earlier resonates. Like, we saw this shit with our uncles. We saw this shit with, you know, maybe our pops, maybe our big brother. We've seen this shit. Yeah. And yet some of our community continues <clears throat> the trend. Rather than saying, nah, that shit's chips, bro. I don't want to be in the crib selling my TV because I got an addiction. That shit's wild. I work hard to collect glasses that look like diamonds. I want my shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I value the shit that I have. And, and he, you know, like, it's just a disappointing part of the conversation that it's there's such a dichotomy of us coming on this podcast and saying, nah, drugs is chips. Stop doing that shit. It's taking away lives. It's breaking down our community. Oh, but by the way, did y'all hear the new Rick Ross? Because he was talking about how he's moving pounds and boats. How are we on both sides of the yeah, that's, yeah, that's a double-edged sword. That's tough. I yeah. mean, that's, that, that's that's tough. Because I love I love listening to Rick Ross, but I don't mean I want to go out and, and sell 20 bricks. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, so I, that, that that's a tough thing. Um, as far as the, the dope in our hood too, like it's coming from someplace, right? So we have our neighborhood pushes, the dope boys, things like that, that are doing their thing on the other side of of that as well. And 
I mean, drug dealers in the hood, those were like the guys that you saw that were successful. Those were the, 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 the first lines of success that you saw, you know what I'm saying? But those same drug dealers, depending on which ones you had in your neighborhood, they still did stuff in the neighborhood for the community. And they weren't out there pushing it, saying like, yo, you should be doing this. You should be selling this. At least the, the drug dealers that I knew coming up, they never was like, yo, this is what you should be doing. They tried to push you away from that into, yo, if you got this skill, do that, that's not the third. They were never mm -hmm. pushing you towards, you know what I'm saying, doing that same thing. And for some of them, you know, with records and things of that nature, they couldn't get a job. They went to the next best thing of what they could do. And unfortunately, that was to start selling drugs. You, you, you know, know something, saying? chef. You know something, no chef. judge on that, because like you know, what I'm saying, like we've we've all had that again. Another thing we've all had in our family or know well is drug dealers. You know what I mean? And you know, it's but but I know it doesn't but, sound good, but they're not all bad people. Here, here's the thing. Here's you know the thing. I think we get, I think we get too narrow, right? And, and okay. blame me a little bit. Let's let's open the picture up because we're yep. what the shows we're talking about today is addiction. All right, that's what we're talking yep. about. And I want you to understand a little bit about the human brain, right? So the human brain has something that's called a rewards track, right? It's just a, a colloquialism, really. But hey, no, your means... vocabulary is amazing tonight, too, bro. By the way, it's the worst of it, man. Yeah, like I just it's the worst for nothing. Like you yeah, said a couple, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna I'm I'm ask you off camera, like, what the fuck did that mean? <laughs> what are we doing tonight, guys? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> The human brain has what's called a rewards track. And it just, it just tells your body um, when to feel good, when like something is, it's like a sensory overload, right? And so for most people, um, and, and the drug examples, right? When they, when they hit these needles and they put, they get this immediate, oh shit, that feels good, right? Now, normally your body doesn't react that way to things. It doesn't normally, it's a, it takes a second normally, right? You ever notice how pain is one of them? Like if you, if you burn your hand, it takes a couple seconds. It takes a couple seconds. Then you're like, oh shit. Meanwhile, your hand been on fire for a couple seconds. You know what I mean? Like it's just like normally there's a delay. But with the sensory overload that we have, that shit's instant and it's powerful. Here's another example of, of this. And this is why I wanted to get away from the drugs. Orgasms are the exact same way. Right. Orgasms are an immediate payoff to our sensory overloads. Right. So this is why you hear of people who have addiction to sex, because that feeling of when they bust, it's like, OK, I want that feeling all the time. That's what, that's what that's the definition of fiends. Right. Is that they want this feeling over and over again and they're finding ways to get that that feeling. Right. And so I don't want to tie this to drugs and drug dealers because there are there are food addicts. Right. People who hit a certain taste bud with a chocolate bar, fuck, I need six of those. That's an addiction as well, right? So there's different layers of what we're talking about tonight. But but the conversation is how do we help people with those addictions? Yeah. Or is it our place to help it's, those people? There's so those? many. It, I mean, <clears throat> um. It is. Yeah, to a degree. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think so. It's a community so. thing. Like, you, you have to approach it with the it takes a village mentality. You don't want to just sit by and watch a loved one destroy themselves with addiction. But um, like I said earlier, it's a very broad thing. There's no uh, one way to go about it. You know what I mean? Like, I recently had to, like have some tough love with a friend of mine I grew up with is struggling with drinking. And I had to tell him like, yo, you gotta get your shit together, bro. I, I'm not, I'm not gonna help you anymore until you get sober. And if you need help getting sober, let me know. But I'm not gonna help you with your business. I'm not gonna help you do anything else. I'm not gonna help you get a car. I'm not gonna give you a ride anywhere. I'm not gonna, I'm not even gonna invite you to my house until you get help. You know yeah. what I mean? Like. Sometimes you have to put your foot down and give that tough love because the gentle approach ain't working. I, 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 I was, yeah. chef made a good point earlier, um, about first having a conversation with someone and kind of saying, Hey, yo, do you recognize that you might have a motherfucking addiction? Right. That's mm -hmm. obviously that's a point of this conversation, right? Because yeah. some people will tell you, nah, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I had a, a conversation recently with, 
one of my very, very close friends, closest people to me, right? When that part of that inner circle, those kind of friends, right? And as I, wa- I, I, I stumbled upon a situation that I was just like, yo, like, you, you might be dealing with an addiction, bro. Like, th- what you're doing, if we can't explain it, if we can't figure it out, then maybe it's some kind of addiction that you might have, right? Mm. And so, first off, I love you. But secondly, I need you to fix this shit, right? And if that solution is with me involved, nigga, tag me in and let's let's double team it and let's figure it out, right? Let's say it's me and you on the journey to get that shit solved. But let's first recognize what it is, right? And then let's figure out a path. But you got to tell me, you know what, Chuck? I am struggling with this. And then I could say, my nigga, great that you acknowledge that. That's the first step. Now it's me and you, and let's go figure it out, right? So sometimes you gotta you gotta force the piece out. You gotta say, hey man, let's just ha- let's call a spade a spade right the fuck now. Had I just turned my back on it and just said, man, you know what? I'm sure other people have turned their back on it, right? And might have and might and might have saluted the situations or might have done any different thing. I can't do that. Right. I'm the guy who. Listen, man, I see this is not right. And I know it's not right because you've told me your goals, your aspirations, your dreams, the things that you want to accomplish. I know you can't do that. And this at the same time, they don't work. Mm-mm. Yeah. Nope. Right. And so we got to find a solution. That's why starting out with having the tough conversation, yeah. you hope leads to a path towards solution. And again, like I said, think- addictions. They run a they run a myriad of different things, right? And 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 again, if you guys see me on this show every week with a fucking Snickers bar, you should be, hey Chuck, hey man, you all right over there, man? Talk to me. Cause sometimes it's a conversation that's needed. You know what I mean? I mean that's just we gotta stop as black people, we gotta stop being scared of hard conversations. Even if it's gonna hurt niggas' feelings. Yeah, hey yeah, bro, absolutely. you go through five, you go through a couple of bottles every weekend of brown. Nah, man. We need a conversation, man. Is everything good? Yeah. Let's, let's have a, let's have the hard conversation, man. because at the end of the day, that's how you know who cares and who doesn't. The people who go buy you the extra that's bottle, the right? They don't give a fuck, man. That's they don't care really, because right. they're not there on Monday. They're there on Friday nights when the lights is on. Oh yeah, it's great. Here's having a bottle. Because when you act, you know, when you high or you drunk or whatever, you, then you act up. You make the party live. Where they on Monday or Tuesday when? You know what I mean? So it's about yeah, the circle too. Kick in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's, 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 absolutely. it's absolutely about the circle. That's the most important. That's the most important thing because it's you know accountability. You know what I'm saying? People being able to hold your people accountable for the things they're doing or what's going on. You know what I mean? And yeah, that tough conversation because we were always taught to man up and and and, mm-hmm. and not say this that and the third and you know what I'm saying it was like nah man up man up man up man up. Usually people that are you know. Um, using addictions as a form of a, a getaway because they're trying to escape from something else mm-hmm. that they're dealing with. Talk that. That's like, yo, this is the max for it. This is this. I got to put this mask on for it and I got to figure out, you know what I mean? This looks good in the public eye. But again, when, when that wears off, like it's like, yo, you're still dealing with that same issue. So it's, it's really a temporary fix. Yeah. And, you know what and I mean? here's what hurts, Chef. Here's what hurts is because I was talking to the Wiz about this. And she gave me some free game too. And she was just like, yo, like, and as a matter of fact, I was talking to her while I had Ant on the phone. So Ant might remember this conversation. We was talking, I don't know what we was talking about, but we were talking and, and she said, you know what? If you're that kind of friend, here's the other side of the coin. And, and this is why I, I definitely want to get y'all opinion. on. She said, yo, if you're that kind of friend and I'm out and I'm, and I'm getting drunk that night and I'm having a good time. I'm not telling you when I'm going out anymore because now you're standing in the way of my, of my addiction slash fun. Mm-hmm. Right. That's so for that individual with the problem. addiction, they having fun. They live in life. They turn it up. But from the outside of looking in, who's concerned about their well being, Oh, nigga, this ain't, this ain't right. So her solution is I ain't telling you shit. And now what happens is you become outside of the inner circle. Yep. You're no longer getting the information that 
that you deem necessary to discuss. This person most likely knows what the fuck they're doing and don't want to have a discussion. They just want to do what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. They enjoy the feeling of the reward track being satisfied. They enjoy yeah. the orgasmic feel of whatever the fuck they do. And they well, don't want you to tell them to stop. They also have an, uh, take an accountability or acknowledge the fact that they're dealing There's with an issue. Yeah, right. And so that's always going to be the issue. It like, yeah, you're just running from something. And yeah. when you're addicted yeah. to shit, you don't even care what inner circle you're part of. Like, and a lot of times, this is this is where it gets real tricky. Sometimes it's not even their inner circle. Like we, you talked about inner circles, like enabling people. Basically, mm-hmm. what about when it's their significant other that's also mm-hmm. doing it with them and encouraging that shit? Mm-mm. That it just becomes way. I think it becomes way more of a trauma bond than if it's your inner circle doing it. Mm-hmm. And it's harder for you to see and kick that shit. Cause it's like, mm-hmm. oh, she loves, he or she loves me. So they ain't gonna tell me no wrong. So we're gonna do this together. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, yeah. And now you're mired in toxicity. That whole, the whole mm-hmm. situation mm-hmm. toxic. It's yep. an accident waiting to happen. You know what I mean? Nothing good, nothing good is going to come from, from that two people who are, with each other and they both got issues and neither one is holding any accountability or something. You, you disagree? Um, Kapo, I see you making no, a face over there. I guess, I guess I'm thinking about another aspect of what, where we are with that, which is okay. Yeah. There's, this was what pain said about having the spouse involved in the addiction. Right. But then there's, mm-hmm. there's the other layer of this addiction happening because of the spouse, right? Because they're trying to, um, because of something that the spouse has has brought to the table that's driving this person towards an addiction, right? I can't deal with this shit no more. I just need to go get drunk. I can't I, I this bitch always yelling in my house. I need to go get I need to go hide, get high somewhere. You know what I mean? Though so now it's not the spot the spouse's fault. They're not participating in it, but they do play a role. Right? And and why this addiction has started. It's, and, and I don't think it's a cancerous situation. A lot of situations, I would say, yo, let's cut that out of your life. I don't know if that's the case. I think there's a way for you to be able to problem solve. For you to be able to. Well, s- if, if the spouse is the issue, how, what, do you, what do you mean? Are you saying divorce? Like, how do you. <sighs> if the spouse is the issue and driving you to a place where you're like, yo, I need to escape. Yeah. Every night, just to function in this household. Yeah. Again, accident waiting to happen. Usually, nothing mm-hmm. good is going to come from well, that's, that that's type that of hard situation. Conversation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like you said, that is that, that is about. that is that hard conversation. Yeah. But that's the thing. It's, it gets you to a point mean? where the conversation is so hard that mm-hmm. when you're dealing with someone who may not be uh, acknowledging what's being presented, now you've just added more weight to. Your, to yourself because it's like, I want to fix this, but this is going to take two of us to do it. But mm-hmm. if it's just me, you know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's going to drive them to probably drink even more. Yeah. And, and, and there's a level of God, I, I, and I, I can't stress this enough. I say it all the time on the show, but there has to be a level of communication that's reached in these relationships, right? Like we all, we're all in these relationships with ideally our best friend. My wife is my best friend, right? Like we talk about, we talk about everything, right? And so we have to have some comfort in being able to speak freely, even when the conversation is raw, even when it's uncomfortable, even when it's, it's difficult for one or both of us to hear. We have to have those conversations. Yeah. Yo, babe, you only lasted seven minutes night last night. You got to get this shit fixed. Up. All right. I, I got it. I, I, what? Those are tough what? conversations. You know, you got to have that kind of conversation okay. sometimes. You got to, even, even, even though I'm, I might want to knock her block off. I'm like, all right, we, we, no, you work towards a communication. You work towards discussion so you can fix the problems. And I think that's when we're dealing with addictions, it's the same, it's the same logic. You have to have a conversation, a communication, or, uh, somebody you can talk to to kind of say, you know what, we're going to work towards a solution. That's why it's definitely, important. yeah, no question. Su- super duper important. And again, it's, yeah. I, I, I think, I think the thing that, that I've always been hung up on is the middle America term about how, 
oh, well, you know, therapy is great. And, I, and, I, and I've listened to you guys. I've absorbed what you guys said tonight about how you don't believe that's the be all end all solution. Right. But a lot of middle middle America does feel that way just to some of the research I've done. And I, I do a lot of reading on this because I'm always in these conversations about therapy. Right. And so um, that's their number one thing. I speak to a therapist and they'll be able to help you guide through. You know, that's what it is. Right. But drugs, when you, though. When, but, well, here's the thing, chef. Here's the thing. And here's why I attack a little bit on this is that when you're talking about bringing in a therapist, you're immediately acknowledging the fact that this is a behavioral issue, right? Now, you guys know my feelings on behavioral issues, right? Behavioral issues are things that you can change at a moment's notice, right? Just change your behavior, my nigga. And that's all that is, right? And so if you're going to tell me that substance abuse and addiction is a behavioral issue, my answer is going to be, okay, stop taking drugs. Stop drinking. Stop with the stop eating the chocolate. It's stop with the sex addiction. No, it's not that easy be. for a crackhead. If, if it's a if it's a behavioral setback, <laughs> it should be. Stop. It. Cut the shit. Is drugs a behavioral issue though? If well, if, if trauma is a solution, if, if therapy is a solution, then yes, it is. It's not. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think it. that's a solution. Yeah, I think it's, it's yeah. part of it. It's not a major part of it. It's a small part of it. Yeah. Rehab is rehab therapy and love like people of village <laughs> <Look at you. laughs> is what it's going to take it's not going to take just therapy like that's crazy yeah. get the fuck out it's, of here it's, it's definitely Re- not just going to take therapy rehab no way. is nothing more than therapy stop it stop it it's not the same thing rehab the is God- not the same thing it's as therapy. the goddamn exact same thing here we go no, here we go it? here we go Spawn my re- rehab you have to detox in therapy, you don't have to detox. Spartan Minds listeners, you guys know for at least four seasons, me and Payne have never been close to the same page on this kind of conversation. <laughs> Once again, Payne is wrong. Um, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and spend another 10 minutes explaining it why, why he's wrong. You guys can go back and listen to episodes in season four, five, six, and I've given him multiple reasons why he's wrong in this discussion. But He's been wrong every time. Yeah, Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Good topic tonight, man. I appreciate the the grown man bars on this. Yeah, man. I feel like uh, things like this need to kind of be uh, addressed and attacked head on because it's not something we just see on TV Mm -hmm. and watch it from the sidelines most cases. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we do TMZ and entertainment tonight and all that stuff, but it'd be right. It can be right in our our room next, next room over. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, for this, sure. That's why I was able to pull from a, a personal place with it. And, you know, what I mean, like currently still dealing with <clears> the <throat> situation because I have a family member that's, you know, that's in the hospital and it's just pretty much almost kind of giving up on mm-hmm. herself and life um, and things of that nature and talking to my cousin and her son. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, you know, it sucks for him because he's the person that has to deal with the brunt of everything, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Of being there as a child and you still got to deal with this, that, and the third. And it's, it's tough because you're tackling on other people's stuff because you don't want to leave them and just, you know what I mean? Even though you got your own shit that you're dealing with and stuff mm-hmm. like that too. So it, it's, it's, it's super, it's super duper tough. But again, a person just has to, they have to want that help. And all you can do sometimes, like Payne said, is give tough love or just like, you know, a person has to want it. They have to want to do something. Yeah, they There's nothing want more it, yeah. you can you can talk until your eyeballs turn blue and you can turn pink in the face. But the person has to hit rock bottom in order for them to want to, like, you know what? I'm just... I, I, how else do you do it if you're constantly saying stuff to a person? You're constantly saying, yo, this, I don't think you should do X, Y, and Z, or this isn't bad for you. Or look at the example of when you did this, look at how it turned out, right? Yeah. Well, they still have to want to be like, you know what, man, you're right. If they're giving you excuses and reasons and stuff like that, trying to justify the bullshit or the behavior, you get nowhere and you're just, you're talking to a wall. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't going to do you any justice at all, you know, but as, as a loved one of that person, you're still going to say your piece, at least the type of person I am, I'm still going to say my piece. I'm still going to try to speak and fight for it. 
you know, but at the end of the day, a person just has to want that for themselves. And there's nothing more that you can do for them until they hit rock bottom and realize like, all right, yo, this enough's enough. They got to want that. You cannot want that or something for a person. You know what I mean? They got to want that. You know, I have a family member um, who most of my life has dealt with alcohol issues, right? And I think what what immediately happens in those arenas is that you guys, again, you guys know my feelings about how I deal with personalities within my circle that don't move in a conducive manner, right? And, you know, I've gone to blows with this cat. We, you know, we had arguments. We've done all of this stuff, right? And and me trying to convince people to move in a certain way, right? Um, and at one point in life, I just kind of wrote him off. And I just kind of said, you know what, bro? I don't fuck with you like that. You know what I mean? And, and it, you know, it hurts because this is family, right? It's, it's, you know, we're supposed to be. This is the village. I keep talking to you all about this goddamn village, you know? But after so many years of dog, like, what, what can I do? How can I help? Like, you're right, chef. It, they have to want to be able to do that. And I, and I struggle with that because as you guys all know, I'm very much um, in your face. I'm very much like, nah, sure. I love you. You're going to move this way. This is how, this is how we sure. move. Y'all yeah. know me well enough to do that, right? Mm-hmm. So when you don't, when you're not acting and, and you're not moving in a desired manner, I have put people out of my life. And does that help towards their solution? Not at all. Not at all. It doesn't help. Right. So at some level in my head, I feel like I failed that individual, but what, Mm. what more, what more can be done? Right. What more can be done? Yeah. When you've exhausted all of your options to help them, it's up to them. Like Maine said, they have to want to do it. So if they don't want to do it and you've done all you can, sometimes the only thing you can do is write them off and, and pray for them. That's it. Yeah. It's, it's it's not that you're giving up on them. I don't think, but like, you know, you're going to just keep fighting a losing battle <clears throat> by trying to get someone to see something in the manner in which you, you see it. That's always going to be tough. That's, that's just, that's, Life just doesn't work like that in that situation where you can constantly get someone to look at things from your lens and your standpoint of how you're trying to see something. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's I, I just yeah, watched it's, a, I just watched a YouTube tough. video about it's just you know March Madness. We love March Madness around here, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. Texas A and M was down by 15 points with 40 seconds left in the game. Spectacular, right? And they stormed back and won the game. I said, this is spectacular, right? And they interviewed the player who went for like eight of those 15, right? And I said, no, what, 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 what was in your head? He said, I know the, the situation seemed insurmountable. I know the situation seemed bleak. But I wanted to be there for the turnaround. And so I had to keep fighting. Even when it, nobody on the team wanted to keep fighting, even when the coaches were like, okay, I wanted to keep fighting because when we get the championship, we get the victory makes it that much sweeter that I stayed through the darkest of times and helped on that turnaround. And so that's how I feel about the family member as well. Like, you know, sometimes giving up on the motherfucker could be that right before that moment when you was going to start that 15 point comeback. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But you didn't give it the opportunity because you decided to get out of the game early. So I do feel a little bit of remorse in that. Like, damn, I, I should have stayed in the game longer. I should have just kept. And I used to play ball a hundred years ago before knees and things issues. And, and so one of the things he's always say was, yo, Chuck, keep shooting. Just keep shooting. You know what I mean? And eventually they're going to start falling. And, and that's the approach we have to take with individuals who deal with substance and addiction is keep shooting, man. Eventually, you hope this game starts to turn around a little bit. You start to see some 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 benefits, and then a comeback starts to build. and And I think some of that with them is give them some little victories. My nigga, celebrate, bro! You made it a week with no alcohol. Stoke, yeah. I love that. 
two weeks. Oh shit, we here, brother. Yeah. Celebrate the little victories. You know what I mean? Always. Because that mm-hmm. that will then automatically start the trigger that rewards track we talked about earlier. Because satisfaction comes in those victories, right? So now you're changing the substance that's giving them that satisfaction, right? A pat on the back might just go just as far as that extra bottle or the extra shot. It might, it might give them that same feeling. So we so, got to stay in the game. No, definitely. So the only thing with something like that, right, is when that person leaves your presence, right, what environment are they going to when you're not around? Because you can't be around 24 hours, right? So what what type of people are they going to once they leave from that area? Or, you, yo, you celebrated the third. Because if they go into an environment where it's a friend there who's like, who's not pushing that same energy on them, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, again, you know, like, yeah. not to, you know, have play double edged sword, but I know you hate oh, you're right. I know you hate that, but like when you leave the scenario, you know, leave the situation, like what are you going back to? Are you going back around that same love? Or are you going back to that person like, man, you did it a week, you good, you know what I'm saying? Yo, here, tap this. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? You know, so it's important too when you're dealing with that type of situation to just make sure that you're around people that's aligned with the same goals and things you are as far as maybe getting clean or, you know, just wanting to change or wanting better things for themselves. You know what I mean? Because, again, we can want stuff for people, right? But they got to want it for themselves. And, again, what type of people are you around once you leave my presence and once I've done put all this good positive energy into you and having a conversation? Like, are you going to a, a person, another person who's, pushing that same type of energy on you Mm -hmm. or you going back to the person who's like, yo, you did good. Like I said, you made it two weeks, man. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, let's hit, yo, let's hit this. You know what I mean? Like, you know what, chef, you know what, chef, this goes to what pain will say in a moment. What about the village? And, and sometimes, sometimes it take a village chief. This ain't a regular, this ain't a regular nigga. This ain't a regular village citizen. This is a village chief. Sometimes it takes that motherfucker to say, Hey man, I'm talking to James about what the fuck going on here and you motherfuckers listen up too, because this environment is not helping what James is going through. So yeah, I'm going to get in James ass about what the fuck he's doing, but y'all got to cut the shit too. Right. This, this is conversation that's reserved for the, for the top, for, for the top nigga in charge. You see what I'm saying? And every crew, yeah. every village knows who that nigga is where when he starts to talk, sure. we shut the fuck up for a minute. Yeah, listen I, to what he's saying. Listen. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Everybody know everybody knows who that dude is. That right. dude can't be pussy. You know what I'm saying? He can't be scared of what the group is going to say. Because he has to dictate the temperature of the crew. He has to dictate yeah. the temperature of the village. And and just like James is out of line and how he's moving within the village, these other niggas are too. Yeah. yeah. Because you're celebrating bullshit and we're not doing that in this village. Yeah. You can certainly go apply for membership in a different village, but it won't yeah. be one with me in it. Right. Yeah. That takes a strong yeah. nigga. And uh, oftentimes, guess what's going to happen? He's going to be alienated a little bit too. Right. Right? Because we talked about niggas still want to have fun. They want to turn up. You get it? Right? Mm-hmm. And so there's going to come a time when just, yo, don't, we're going over here real quick. Don't tell him. Now what? Now what? He's doing his job. I'm controlling the temperature here. You niggas are going outside of the crew to do up to do this rather than absorbing the, the proper energy. Mm-hmm. It's a difficult space to be in. Yeah. It's yeah. a difficult space That's to a be fact. in. That's a and fact. To them motherfuckers that do that shit, like the fact that you sneak in, you know you're doing something stupid. So knock it off. Right. 100%. Yeah. 100%. 100%. And that's the shit that hurts the most is that when you know you're doing shit you're not supposed to be doing and, mm-hmm. and you're doing it around me. Cause you see me right the fuck here, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, and and what you see is oh, I'm gonna run to the store real quick. Okay, <laughs> right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I'll be right back. All right, buddy. You want me to go with you? Nah, nah. I got it, my dude. You know <clears throat> oh, okay. you gotta call that shit out, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You gotta call it out. You can't be afraid 
you cannot be afraid to call out I, your I, people. I've made those mistakes, on, sure. I, I on can't, their I bullshit. I can't front. I've made that mistake. I will, I'll never do it again. I'll never to do it call again. Them out? I made those to not call it out. Oh, to not call it out. Yeah, when you yeah, see okay. some shit, and you're like, for sure, this ain't what the fuck. Nah, on? man. Nah, when you see some shit you, because because it's, if we're gonna keep it, honey, so. there's some hesitancy in how you're judged by your peers, your the people in your village. There's some hesitancy. We all have that, right? I, as much as I say it on this show, I'm probably not at the level of. I don't give a fuck about what y'all niggas think. This is bullshit. I'm not, I'm not there. I'm, I'm not, I'm close. Probably there now, but I haven't always been. And I think that nigga is needed in every community, in every village, in every group. He's needed. In every crew. In every crew. It's gotta be 100%. one. 100%. It's gotta be one person that ain't afraid to, again, 100%. yo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you Stop know what I mean? Stop celebrating so, bullshit, man. Yeah. 100%. Right. 100%. And you gotta know the, the people who you're in your circle. So when you are caught on some shit, like, you can't even get a defense mechanism and get mad. You got to be like, you know what? You're right. Well, that separates you know the real crew from, that's you know what I mean? And that's, and, that, and that's, and that's it. Yo, you got to just be like, you know what, man? Nah, you, you know what? You're right, man. I fucked up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's, that's the biggest thing. Like, yo, it's, it's cool. But again, pride gets in the way and people's like, oh, I don't, you know, people think that they're less of a person by saying, yo, my bag or whatever. Nah, nah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yo, it's okay, man. Like, I mean, it's all good. Let, let, let's figure out the process. Let's figure out the journey yeah. of how we can get to a better place. One hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the that's the biggest thing is for you know what I mean. Yeah. When you call a person out on some bullshit, nine times out of ten, that's a person you really love. You yeah. know what I'm saying? One hundred. Like, yo, play. I can't. I, I I can't. The type of man I am, I can't sit back and watch you do something to yourself. One hundred. That's just like yo, doesn't sit well with me, and and yeah. just as a friend not say nothing about it like that's that's whack if you can't yeah. a, be able to call your people out on some bullshit like you know what i mean so you know if i i hope that fellas if i'm ever doing some whack shit or some shit y'all be like yo put me say yo man man that was that was whack what you did bro you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like i just want to let you know that you know what i mean I'm like you yeah. know what yeah now nah, i appreciate that i appreciate you saying it you know what i'm saying and not like trying to justify my behavior or whatever the case may be. Like, nah, nigga, say, say, yo, this, you fucked up, man. And it's cool. You fucked up. We all do it. You yeah. know what I mean, yeah. let's figure out how we don't fuck up again. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's the biggest thing. Let's, let's, let's figure out how we don't make this a second time or a habit or something that's just going to keep being done. Like, nah, nigga, let's, let's, let's nip this see, shit in the bud now. But see that, that right there is man behavior that mm -hmm. separates men from boys you're yep. willing you want to be held accountable by your people a lot of motherfuckers don't want to be accountable they want people to be like be yes men yeah and i, I believe i had a, a painfully honest talking about that shit yes men ain't real friends yeah, knock that shit off yeah you did yeah, yeah. You yeah. Nah, that's definitely real, it's real that's real talk yeah and what you hope definitely is that not. that mother takes motherfucker takes that that knowledge not as an attack but as a as a show of love like you know th those are the ones who really give a fuck about you? You know what I mean, and, and you know, you know a lot. That's an opportunity to be defensive, but it's it's not that man. It's, it's just a show of love. So, um, I, I challenge us all, all four of us here. I challenge little. I challenge all the sparring minds listeners. Like, yo, you see somebody struggling with a situation, addiction, um, substance abuse, just just poor behavior overall. Just like, poor behavior. Not yeah, abusive right. to your village. Like, right. Step in, right. man. Your, your voice is powerful, man. And you may not get it at the moment, but you know, that, that message might really resonate with that motherfucker. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it might be a different tone than what they've been hearing throughout the course of all this story. You know what I mean? And your tone might be the tone that's needed to help get some change going. So I, I definitely challenge everybody to be more active in, in solutions on that on that front. Great conversation, yeah, man. Sure. I appreciate this. Word up. Word yeah, up. yeah, man. I might, I might, in the absence of little, I think I may have come up with a, uh, quote unquote mirror time for this. Talk, one. talk, talk, uh, 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 Just it painfully honest. So. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Painfully <laughs> honest, right? Painfully <laughs> honest. Um, be addicted to peace. Detox from the bullshit. Mm. Yeah. Simple enough. That's dope as hell. Oh, that's real. 
Yeah, I like that. Love that. Oh, man. Spawn Minds listeners, man, you'll always catch us on our YouTube channel. We're in season seven, so definitely go ahead and like, subscribe, and follow up the content we have over there. We're going to start giving you a lot of different shorts as well for season seven, so stay tuned for those. Those are coming out. Um, As you're starting to see now with this episode, we are going to a a pre-recorded content slate for this upcoming season, so we won't be live, but you can always jump into our comments on our Facebook page, which is uh, generally pop with a lot of new information over there, but we have a lot of chef topics that's going over there. So definitely jump onto those pages. Uh, and then also while you're at it, subscribe to the SoundCloud uh, or wherever you get your podcast from on, on uh, hey, just the audio level. Yep. Um, audio. You know, take us with you on the ride to work. I mean, we, we out here, man. Season seven. Like I said, we, we're global now. We're, we're international. Take us out the country. We're, yeah, <laughs> you man, know we're out of here, man. So <laughs> definitely get, in, up, get on the train while, while we're moving, man. Why you sound like a pilot? <laughs> he's still, a, he's still. A, well, you know, he didn't fly. What about you? Yeah, I was gonna say he he flew to the plane to, to ATL, but he didn't fly. He was. <laughs> his <laughs> drive was nah, fucking man. terrible too. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> oh my god! I can't imagine, Yo, fucking. It, it, here's the thing about it that pisses me off, right? Because I told Hightower, and Hightower was like, "Driving? What the fuck are you talking about?" I said, "So the it hit me like the next day." Like, Yo, Chuck, I gotta go to Providence. I said, oh, bet that's like a 45 minute drive. He said, drive. I, nigga, I said, nigga, I know you're not going to fly to Providence. Nigga. Yo. <laughs> the, chopper, the chopper was waiting out back. Nick, I can't. Yeah. I said, hey, you better than yeah. me, you got, You got to figure it out, dog. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way you flew to. There's no way you flew to run out. Nigga, there's no way. Nigga, nigga no flew way. To, there's, nigga flew there's to no fucking. Nigga, I promise. There's no. <laughs> 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 oh, yo, 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 oh, Spawn Minds. We appreciate y'all tuning in, man. Uh, this is your yo, man. absolutely episode one twenty six. Oh, it's a guy, Payne Gretzky. Yo, Chef Main Topic, man. We out of here, man. Little. We'll catch y'all next week. Yes, sir. Out the little. Peace and love, y'all. Hold it down. Peace and love. Peace and love.